Good morning, everyone. It's great to be a part of this press conference today. My family and I are really thankful for this special opportunity. Shane Beamer is a great person. He's sincere, he's humble, he values his family, he builds relationships, and he's absolutely passionate about the University of South Carolina. Uh, my interactions with him in the past and, and throughout this process have been incredibly positive, and I'm really confident that he's well prepared for this new job and he'll excel as a head coach. I'm really looking forward to working with him and this group of people that he has retained and hired, some of which I already know, you could just tell the quality of the people and having a unified staff is so critical and, and uh, certainly it looks like that's gonna, gonna come together so nicely. Um, for me, this is a great opportunity to challenge myself in the most competitive conference in college football and I'm really excited about that. It's why we do what we do, to put your skills and your experience to the test on the biggest stage. And this game has been so good to me for the majority of my life, and I'm really looking forward to that. It's also a chance for our family to return to a part of the country that we're very familiar with. And some of our best days were spent while we were at Elon, and while Elon was a member of the Southern Conference and we were competing against schools from the state like Furman Wofford and the Citadel. And obviously, this is an entirely different level of competition here, but I'm really ready to roll up my sleeves and get to work. When people think of special teams, they might think about key players or schemes or maybe even the impact of field position. I see my role as much more holistic than that. My job, first and foremost, is to build a relationship with every player on the roster and every staff member in the complex. You can't develop each player if you don't connect with them first. And it really takes a village to excel on special teams. It's not a one-man show. So I have to create that kind of buy-in every day with my demeanor, my organization, and by installing a simple system that everyone can wrap their arms around. And if I'm doing my job well, all of our players, from the walk-ons to the top recruits, will become better football players. I really believe there's a direct correlation between what we teach on special teams and their offensive and defensive positions. It's really football 101. So my goal is to help every position group on the team if I can. And once the players make that connection, it's almost like an epiphany and the real growth can take place. And before you know it, the sum is greater than the parts. Uh, I also wanna help prepare our players for life after football and encourage them to make the most of this opportunity on and off the field. And, and that includes their education. Uh, a program like ours has so many incredible resources. You have to embrace it. You have to take advantage of it. And for me, the ability to impact with the majority of the team and interact with the majority of the team on a daily basis just gives you a chance um, to, to hopefully encourage that and, and positively impact that. So the, the bottom line is the kids are going to see that I really care about them as people. And, and hopefully that, that helps further those relationships. Um, as far as the associate head coach role goes, uh, that's something I really look forward to, hopefully growing organically with Shane. Whatever he needs me to do from unloading the bus or attending a meeting that he can't be at, whatever he has on his mind, I am certainly up for it, and I'll do it with a smile on my face. Uh, the biggest part of that role, in my opinion, is earning his trust and being on the same page every day so that you can further the mission and the vision of the program uh, side by side. Um, and lastly, I, I just wanna mention that I'm really excited to work with the group of specialists in South Carolina. It certainly looks like the program has a solid foundation in place with that group. And I certainly hope I can help each and every one of those guys reach their potential as we work together in the months to come. We'll open up for questions. Josh Kendall with the first one. Morning, Pete. Josh Kendall with The Athletic. How are you? Yes, sir. Good morning. If I can take you back a little bit, if you can remember one or two of your welcome to being a head coach moments and how your experience going through that will help Shane. You'll be able to use that to help Shane. Sure. Well, I think the, the best thing I did looking back, and I was 31 years old at Lehigh when that happened, and I just tried to be myself. I tried never to forget why I got put in that position and what had prepared me to move into that position. And I tried not to change who I was. I tried to be very 
comfortable with myself. And, and I hope now, uh, 20 years later, I'm still that same person. And that's one thing that's really impressed me with Coach Beamer is that he's very comfortable with himself. He's very authentic. Uh, and, and I think that will really serve him well as he interacts with all the different constituents he's going to need to, to do that with at, at Carolina, uh, starting with the players and, and as he builds this staff, uh, not forgetting where you came from. And, and I mentioned his humility and, uh, and I think hopefully that's something that we have in common. And I think that will really serve him well. What if any parallels are there between being a special teams coordinator and a head coach that might make that transition a little easier than a different role? You have to get to know every player in the program. Uh, you, you can't live in your own little world. Uh, you have to see the big picture. You have to be incredibly organized. Um, you know, what I have to do in my role, uh, you have to maximize every minute, be so efficient with your time because you can't repeat things. You, you can't, you don't have 20 minutes of individual before you actually run a play in a team period. Um, so I, I think those 15 years have really served me well as I, as I make this transition the last five years into being a special teams coach. And I think Shane's experience in that role, even going back to when he was a player and, and when he worked for his father, uh, I think that's going to really serve him well as he needs to be a big picture guy now and, and have an overall level of, of organization uh, to make everything run efficiently every day to be successful. Thanks, Pete. Mike Yuba. Hi, Pete. Mike Yuba from Watch Fox Sports. Welcome to Columbia. Uh, for, a guy that loves, for a guy that loves special teams, um, you know, how, how neat of an opportunity is this to be able to work with a, with a Beamer? Um, obviously something that's near and dear to their heart. And uh, what, what will that be like for you when you sit down with Shane and, and maybe uh, Frank comes on by and just, you know, a, a Lembo and a couple of Beamers talking special teams. What would that meeting be like? Yeah, it's going to be really exciting and, and fulfilling. And uh, one thing that Shane and I have in common besides special teams is that we're both history guys. And uh, so, uh, you know, the reverence I have for his dad is, is incredible. Um, and, and I'm a guy who's constantly trying to learn and constantly trying to evolve and constantly trying to, to, to do more with less. I've had to do that at many of my stops along the way. And so anybody that I can learn from and, and find a, a better way, a more efficient way to teach and be effective at what we do, I am totally up for it. And uh, I told Shane as we were going through this process together that the, the thought of having his dad around some was something I really looked forward to. Do you remember any moments, you know, when, when coaches hop around, they go to the national conventions? Do you remember any moments taking any notes down from Frank? Well, I think I actually got to shake his hand once. Uh, at a convention. And, and, and speaking of that, uh, Coach Bobo and I served on a committee together at one time. And, uh, and as far as Eric goes, I was one of those head coaches that, that walked into the Hammond School at one time and, and certainly remember that experience. Uh, uh, Des Kitchens being a Furman guy, um, the Lehigh and Elon connections with Furman go way back. So as all of these pieces start coming together, with this great staff that Shane's building, uh, my excitement just continues to grow. Ben Breiner. Uh, hey, Pete. Um, I know that you kind of mentioned the process of getting to know everyone uh, on the roster. And I, I want to ask, what is the experience like doing that at, at three different places in Maryland, Rice, and Memphis? And what have you learned from the process of kind of doing that? I, I assume you got to do it pretty quickly and, and doing it pretty quickly at different stops. Yeah, you're absolutely right. First, let me just say to everybody, this is probably my 500th interview with Ben Briner. Uh, ben was actually our, our beat writer up in Muncie at Ball State uh, for a while and uh, thoroughly enjoyed my time with him. And, and uh, I went through a lot of assistant coaches. I went through three athletic directors, uh, three presidents, or was going on my third president. Uh, but the biggest loss of all during those five years was when Ben moved on to the state. So uh, it, it excited to be reunited with him here. Uh, ben, I, I'll just go back to when you're a head coach and you have to know 110 guys on the roster. Uh, you have to know everybody you're recruiting. You have to know uh, everybody from uh, the, the janitor up to the uh, chairman of the board of trustees. 
and, and so many others, it, it, uh, it's something that uh, maybe comes more easy to some people innately than others. But uh, like anything else, you, ha you have to train yourself to, to do that. Remember names, remember stories, remember backgrounds, remember where people are from, uh, what their, what their skill sets are, obviously. And so uh, I think these last five years, uh, those 15 years as a head coach, having to do that and, and make that a big part of who I am and how I operate every day has really helped me in this transition to be a special teams coach. Uh, and it's something I thoroughly enjoy. I, I really, really uh, believe in developing each player. Um, this is 28 years of doing this, and I haven't forgotten why I got into this profession. It's about people. It's about relationships. It, it's about your, your passion for the game. It's, a, it's about uh, working in a university community. And uh, the role of, of, of special teams coordinator ha has allowed me to do that in a very fulfilling way. Dick Cox. Hi, Coach. This is Dick Cox with Lindy Sports and Cox Sports Broadcasting. You are the guru now of special teams. What was it that attracted you to special teams and, again, uh, made that your specialty now? Well, I, I'll, I'll question what you said about that. Um, I, I, I am going to work hard and, and be thorough and try to be detailed and organized, but, but hopefully the – the product that we put on the field uh, 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 backs up, um, you know, what you said. But uh, I, I would just say this. Well, I, I figured out early on as a head coach uh, at the FCS level, because uh, I, I did have an offensive background. I was an offensive lineman and an offensive line coach early in my career. Um, when I became a head coach, I coached the tight ends. And I quickly learned that, that you get pulled in a lot of different directions. Um, but the way that I would be able to continue to build relationships and impact every player on the roster more than anything else was going to be through special teams. And at some of these places that I've worked at where you've had to do more with less and find creative ways uh, to, to win two or three game, games a year to make a difference, I, I felt that special teams was, was that avenue. So as, as my head coaching career went on, uh, I got more and more involved with the special teams aspect uh, and to a degree less involved with the offense. And so when I made the transition back to being an assistant coach, that was really a, a, a natural for me. And I do think uh, through some good times and some bad, the, the last five years, uh, it, it's really gotten to a point, I almost feel like I've gone back and gotten a PhD in coaching here these last five years and, and have really put together a, a pretty neat system that's uh, simple, easy to learn, efficient. Um, I really look forward to, to bouncing all of that off Shane and the rest of the staff and, and coming to a point where we're all really happy with, with how we're going to approach it with the kids. But, but I don't think there's any question that this all started back during my head coaching days uh, to put me in position to hopefully do this at a very high level as an assistant coach. Scott Eisberg. Hey, Pete, uh, two quick questions for you. Um, first, uh, how much does it help uh, you that Parker White is, uh, how much does it help you that Parker White is returning? He, he posted on Instagram last week that he'll be back. How much does it help to get a uh, established kicker back? Oh, there's no question that uh, uh, there's returning guys in, in that group of specialists uh, that are, are proven, uh, some good young talent, some great veteran talent, and, uh, and that really allows you, uh, when you come in, in my position, uh, to feel good that you can start to work on the other aspects, the returners, all the different pieces on the roster. And I know some of those will need to be built here as, as, as we recruit up through the next signing day um, and even beyond that through the, the, the spring and the summer. Uh, but there's certainly a peace of mind knowing that you have uh, a good group of specialists there. And one nice thing for me, um, having been able to just be the special teams coordinator uh, at Rice and at Memphis, at, at going back to Maryland, I, I coached the tight ends there. But one thing I've learned these last three years is, is not only the development of the entire roster and the relationships you can build with the entire roster when you're just coaching the special teams, but you also can develop those specialists. And and they're people too, and they deserve the same kind of attention 
uh, as the linebacker group or the tight end group or the running back group or anybody else. And uh, I'm very proud of, of guys like Jack Fox at, at Rice and Riley Patterson at Memphis and, and even Preston Brady, our holder at Memphis, uh, had, had a great career here the last two years. And um, Riley Patterson made some big tackles for us in games. If you're not working with those guys on those little things uh, day to day and, and week to week, uh, and they're off on some separate field just doing their own thing, then they might not reach their full potential. So there's definitely some benefits uh, to the way Shane has structured this. And, and second question for you, uh, work down here in Charleston, a guy that we're, we know quite well is Kevin Higgins. How much does Kevin Higgins have to do with your success and your career and the trajectory of your career? Because it kind of is mirroring him uh, going, you know, taking an assistant uh, associate head coaching job at a, at a Power Five. Yeah, I, I might get a little emotional, to be honest, uh, that you asked that question. Uh, he's been a great mentor to me since uh, – since I was 28 years old. Uh, great man, great family man, great coach, uh, unparalleled energy. And uh, it, it's, he, he's been a special part of my life for a long, long time. And uh, it's one of the exciting things about coming back to the Carolinas is knowing that uh, coach is up there at Wake Forest and uh, we'll get a chance to see him more and his family more. And uh, he's made a big impact on my life. Uh, and a week doesn't go by that, that we don't talk. Uh, so thank you for asking that question. Hale McGranahan. Hey, Coach. Hale McGranahan. I work for the South Carolina 24-7 site. I was just curious, and, and this might be a better question for Coach Beamer, but how, how will you be involved with, with other facets of the staff? Will, will you be – sitting in on, on offensive meetings and, and contrib contributing that way, or is it strictly special teams and you're kind of evolving associate title? I will do whatever Shane needs me to do and, and I'll be happy to do it. I'll be excited to do it. Um, and, you know, I would anticipate that some of that, once everything comes together, will be playing off Shane a little bit. If there's some place he needs me to be, cause he can't be there. If he's going to be, in an offensive meeting and he needs me to sit in there with the defensive staff to evaluate recruits, uh, I'm going to be completely up for it. Uh, so uh, that's one of the neat things as, as this all comes together. Uh, I, I need to be adaptable. I need to be flexible. Um, if, if my role evolves and changes over time, uh, I, I, I will be glad to, to do that and, and excited about doing that. Um, I, I use the analogy with Shane. I'm a little bit older than him, but, you know, back in the day, we had those stereo systems that had those green and red bars on. And I always thought as a head coach, my job was to create equilibrium. And that's not just uh, because you hire a receiver coach and you fill in that spot. It's about the personalities. It's about the skill sets. It's about uh, what guys bring to your staff in different ways. And I always felt like as a head coach, I, I had to have a certain degree of flexibility uh, because your staff was never the same two years in a row. And so uh, I hope I can be a great assistant coach for Shane. And part of that is by being flexible, by being adaptable um, and, and doing whatever it is he needs me to do so that we can maximize the potential of the program. Rick Henry. Rick Henry, you still there? Yeah. Gonna have to unmute, Rick. Sorry about that. Here you go. Hey, no Coach. Oh, welcome, welcome to Columbia. Rick Thank Henry, you. WIS TV. Uh, I was just wondering, um, you said that you were a history buff. Um, over the years, uh, how much did you know about South Carolina football, or has there been a is there one game, a coach, one player, when you hear the words Gamecocks of South Carolina, that's what you think of. And also as being a special teams coach, uh, how important is it to stress to maybe some guys that, hey, even though you're only going to be on the field maybe for a few plays with this unit, but this can be the group that changes the momentum of a game and really come up with um, 
some plays that decide the outcome? Well, at my time, uh, particularly at Elon, uh, there were a lot of people I crossed paths with that had either gone to school at South Carolina or worked at South Carolina. Um, I actually have some former uh, assistants of mine that, that, that have spent time uh, at South Carolina as well. And, and the thing that uh, resonates with me that is consistent with all of them is their passion and their loyalty to the place. Uh, their, their genuine excitement um, about their time there, the relationships that they built while they were there, how much they look forward to going back there and staying connected with all the different people that have worked there. So it's, it's nice to know that people feel so strongly about a place. And, and now that I'm going to have a chance to be a small part of that um, is, is very, very special. Um, when it comes to the, the, the special teams, uh, I think it's important that I'm constantly uh, trying to create buy-in in the building, whether it be with the absolute top player on the roster who, who may only be a one unit special teams player. He may have one role. He may be, be on the punt team. He might be the right guard on the punt team. And that's a critical role. Or it might be a guy who his only role is to be on two or three units, maybe even as a backup. And so what you're constantly doing is, is trying to create a culture that goes hand in hand with the culture of the program. Uh, that, that's something I really believe is that the, the culture of the program will be mirrored by how our special teams play and our special teams will reflect our overall culture as a program. And, and that's something that I know Shane and I completely agree on. Uh, it's such a big part of, of who he is as well. So uh, creating that buy-in, uh, making sure that, that we're developing those relationships with guys and, and allowing them to understand that what they do, doing it well, doing it efficiently, making full speed decisions uh, can have such a positive impact on the outcome of games. John Del Bianco. Hey coach, John Del Bianco with the South Carolina 24 seven site as well. You had mentioned in your opening comments about, you know, the challenge of, of special teams in the SEC. I'm just curious in your, in your year studying the SEC, potentially playing SEC teams, what do you know about, you know, special teams in the SEC and how important it is to success at this level? Well, obviously the, the talent level that's on the field is, is the best in the country. Um, and so there's going to be very little margin for error. And, and so really what it, what it comes down to for me is first and foremost, you have to take care of the football, right? Great offenses take care of the football. Uh, you have to take care of the football on special teams because uh, that's the fastest way to win or lose. If you can create some turnovers over the course of the season on special teams, that's great. But the most important thing is, is taking care of the football yourself with your returners and the people that are handling the football, the specialists and so forth. Uh, I don't care whether you're in the SEC or, or in the Southern Conference, uh, we know that field position has a huge impact on the outcome of games, right? The closer we're going to start to the opponent's goal line, the greater our chances to score and vice versa. So uh, that, that's a huge part of it as well. And uh, if we can help our field position through what we're doing on special teams, uh, that's going to be critical. Uh, explosive plays and any offensive drive that includes an explosive play or two has a much greater chance to score. So if we can create some explosive plays on special teams, whether that's somehow stealing a possession, whether that's a, a, a big return or denying those big returns to opponents, uh, that's gonna, gonna really increase our chances uh, to win games in, in, this, in this tough conference. And then there's another piece that I call hidden yards and that's trying not to beat yourself. Um, when, a, when a punt hits the ground and it rolls 15 yards, right? Those are hidden yards that we're losing. Or if a return gets called back because of a penalty, right? We're losing a lot of hidden yards. Uh, there's, there's literally dozens of different ways that that happens. And getting the players to understand about making great decisions, playing smart, doing the things that are gonna allow us to win games and not beat ourselves. Uh, that's, that's a huge part of, of what I do day in and day out. And then lastly, situational football. And, and Shane has mentioned this. 
And I think it's so important that starting with me and Shane and our staff, but right down to every player on the roster, understanding how we handle special team situations that might come up once or twice in a season that can, in that one play, win or lose a game for us is just absolutely critical. And um, as you get into preseason camp and as you get into your weekly preparation, you have to spend time on those critical situations so that when they do come up and things are on the line, your guys understand they, they have the habits formed to execute those situations the right way in a successful way. So it's going to be a huge challenge and there's going to be a lot of pieces that need to come in, into place for us to, to, to do it at a high level. But uh, I, I am, I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, I believe in our system. Uh, I'm really looking forward to, to, to building it with these coaches and, and knowing that Shane is going to be so supportive of, of this aspect. And uh, hopefully great days lie ahead. Pete Acabelli. Uh, hey, Pete. Uh, first of all, I just want to welcome a fellow Staten Islander and Monsignor Farrell graduate to South Carolina. I can't imagine there are too many of us uh, down here in the uh, Palmetto State. So no welcome question. on is, that. Is there, a, is there a good Italian restaurant we can I eat can up fill at? You, I can fill you in on that uh, uh, absolutely when we get a chance. But, but I, was, I was happy to see that a, uh, a Farrell Lion is, uh, is, is doing well in that. So um, wanted to know, you know, how difficult was it for you a few years ago to go from head coach to assistant? And obviously you've made peace with, with this point in your career, but do you consider yourself, hey, I'm, I'm still a head coach who down the road, you know, I may, get my, I may find another opportunity for myself? Great question. Uh, I, I think the key to making that move was, uh, let's face it, there's some big egos in our profession, in every profession, and you need to have some degree of ego to do your job with confidence. But one thing I've always tried to be, uh, while I am confident in, in what I do and how I do it and how I go about things, uh, I do think I haven't forgotten where I've come from. And, and that I'm a, a humble, respectful person. And that made it a lot easier for me to make that move uh, when I did. There were some head coaches that I talked to that said they would never do that, could never do that, would never want to do that. And, and that wasn't my approach whatsoever. Uh, I looked at it from a standpoint of, uh, of a chance to go back and, and better myself and, and get back to, to teaching. And I felt like some of my greatest growth as a coach was in my 20s when I was just living in the office and, and soaking up everything I could from from every other uh, coach I was around, including Kevin Higgins that we talked about earlier. So for me, uh, going to Maryland, and, and that was definitely a challenging situation uh, in a lot of ways, but it made me a better person. It made me a better coach. It made me have to go back and, and reinvent myself in a lot of ways. And it, it made me certainly a better technical football coach than I think I've ever been in my career. And so when I got to Rice, uh, working with uh, some, some uh, great kids, but, but not a whole lot of, of talent per se, um, I, I felt like I was really ready to, to, uh, to hopefully help those guys get better. And, and, and we did. And, and of course, what we've been able to accomplish at, at Memphis. So uh, I, I'm really, uh, at a, at a point in my life, in my career, where I'm very happy with what I'm doing uh, and, and how we're doing it. And the key is just doing it around great people. And uh, I, I really, really feel good about the environment that I'm going to be going into here uh, a few days from now, starting with uh, who's at the top and his demeanor and what he's all about, you know, right on down through uh, the, the guys that he's hired and as well as even some of these specialists that I have some familiarity with. Thanks, Pete. Thank you. Ben Briner. Uh, two questions, Pete. First, has, uh, has Coach Feely given you any kind of Columbia scouting report yet? And, uh, and, and, and second, you mentioned kind of getting to know all the players, but what kind of is the process of, I guess, building special teams units, picking guys out, assembling them and, 
and sort of getting those, getting those in place by the time a season rolls around. Sure. Well, uh, I've gotten a lot of good uh, insights into living in Columbia, and I, obviously I've been through there uh, a number of times. In fact, our Elon teams used to stop and practice uh, there en route to Georgia Southern. That was a, a pretty long trip and we used to break it up and, and, uh, and get our Bernie's fried chicken and, and do all those kinds of things. So uh, look, really looking forward to living there because uh, everybody that has uh, says they, they've really, really loved it. And we do know a number of people that do live there uh, and are, are very fond of the place. Um, ben, putting your, your group together on special teams, it's really a matrix. And this goes back to being a head coach and seeing the big picture. There might be a guy that you'd love to have starting on three units, but if you know he's playing 60 snaps a game at linebacker, that may just not be possible. That might not be in the best interests of the program. So one thing I'm constantly doing is looking at it like a matrix and putting it all together, uh, knowing what the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator and position coaches expect out of those guys in their different roles. And that changes week to week. You may have a guy who is a nickelback who is going to play 80 snaps in the next game. And maybe the week before he was starting on three special teams. And now you've got to back that down to one or two units because you know he's never leaving the field on defense. Even further, I'll take it one step further. It's, it's a defensive guy who is coming off the field, and, and do you really want to use him on kickoff return, knowing he may have just gone through uh, a long series and, and the opponent scored, uh, and, and he needs, a, needs to take a, a breather before he can go back out on the field. So, again, those 15 years of experience as a head coach and – and I, I'm somewhat analytical in my thinking, uh, always trying to see the big picture, um, always trying to be a team player. And, 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 you know, how can we solve this problem in the best interest of the football program and the best interest of these kids and putting our team in the best position to win? And, and that's something I will always do. Um, I've got to be the ultimate team player in my role. Wes Mitchell. Hey, Coach, uh, West Mitchell, Gamecock Central. I, I was on YouTube. I saw a play from you back in 2011, I think, and you opened up a game with an onside kick at Oklahoma. At um, Oklahoma. Yeah. So how – um? It was all downhill from there. I wasn't going to bring that part up. Uh, I saw the final score. But <laughs> if – um, I know fans love aggressive plays like that, but how much maybe pregame scouting goes into feeling comfortable – making a call like that and, um, you know, how, how much can maybe stealing a possession or, or making a big special teams play flip a game uh, potentially for you? Yeah, I, I really, really believe strongly in that, that this, this is not uh, something you just do, right? This is an aspect of your program and an aspect of the game where you can make a difference. And those opportunities may not present themselves every week like it did there at Oklahoma. Uh, but when they do, uh, you've got to be strategic and you've got to be thoughtful, uh, but you've, you've got to look to, to make a difference when you can. And uh, I know Shane and I share that, that same philosophy. Um, and it, it's my job to be very, very thorough, to make sure no stone is unturned. Uh, it may be a specific matchup. It may be matching up one of our players at South Carolina on the, the left tackle on the opposing team's punt team that makes a difference. Sure, it may be a surprise onside kick or, or some kind of fake or whatever we may uh, have in at that time based on what we're doing. Um, but we, we can make a difference. We talked about explosive plays earlier, and I would put all of that into that category uh, as you're looking to build a program and, and try to find a way to make a difference, maybe in two or three games a year, uh, I, I definitely believe this is a great vehicle to make that happen. Josh Kendall. Hey, Pete, kind of a logistical question. Do you know when this group will be able to slash expected to meet in person in South Carolina's building? I know that 
there's a transition with the holiday, but there's also a COVID issue. And how's that going to work? Do y'all know yet? Well, I'll defer to, to Shane on that with, with those logistics, but uh, I can tell you personally, we've got a, a few things to wrap up the right way here at, at Memphis and uh, anxious to get down there and, and, and get going and uh, getting settled in and uh, getting to know the staff first and foremost. Uh, some of the guys, obviously, I've, I've connected with uh, in the past in different ways. Uh, and then obviously when the players get back, um, I would very much look forward to, to sitting down and, and talking with each and every one of them, uh, getting to know their backgrounds and uh, figuring out what I can do to be a resource for them and, and to help them make the most of this experience. And, and part of that uh, hopefully is a, a great experience in our special teams room.